wanted that final that final step what if we wanted to have it to where if no condition was met we still wanted to print something then we can use else with it else log let's just put something ain't right <coughs> now you now what it does is it checks the first condition when that one fails it'll check the next one if that one fails as well it'll just go to a default something ain't right now an important thing to remember is is you cannot do an else if after an else as you can see Visual Studio starts telling you something's wrong and this shouldn't be done just remember an else if has to go before an else now you can chain else ifs as I just did and have multiple else if statements as long as the else follows so let's delete this okay that covers if else and else if cover now there's one more I want to cover and this is a switch statement now a switch statement can house multiple conditions based with cases now a switch statement can only handle numeric values so this is useful for constants and enumerations which we will cover later but I want to teach you how to use the switch now so when we do use it in a later tutorial you will understand it so let's make one variable make it an int test int and our code test int equals let's make it equal 5 now let's make our switch statement so the format for switch is switch value then this is different now for each case or condition you start with the word case and the condition so we'll put one then use a, then use a colon what you want it to do and each case must have a break so I guess now you can see the usefulness you can put multiple cases to do multiple things in one place for one value so instead of having a very complicated if conditional tree and else if you can just use a switch and have multiple multiple decisions and outcomes so now let's make let's use a practical approach so <coughs> switch test in case one let's put log it's equal to one break case two log is equal to two case three log it's equal to three now let's say we only wanted to check for a set number of cases <coughs> and if they weren't met we wanted to have a default now similar to the else there's the default case which we just type default what we want it to do and break now now if all of these if case one wasn't met case two wasn't met case three then the default would trigger so So, now what the switch does is it gets the value test in, and then it matches it based on decision. So, if test in is equal to 1, we would log it's equal to 1. If it's equal to 2, it's equal to 2. If it's equal to 3, it's equal to 3. Now, we know test in is equal to 5. So, what, this will ha what will happen is, is it will check each case, but after none of those are met, it will just go to the default, since we have no case to handle that it's equal to 5. 
But if we did, case, Now, if we did have a case for five, like we just put, it will put it's equal to five, and then it will get out of the switch statement. Now, there's something funny to remember. If a default comes at the beginning of the switch statement, Everything else will be skipped. <coughs> so remember to keep <coughs> your default at the bottom of your switch statement. And that's it. A switch is just a fancy long if statement. Now remember this cannot be used with any other type of value but numeric values. So integers and perhaps floats but nothing else. Maybe even bytes. My bad. Sorry about that. Now these are some simple condition if, else, else, if, and switch. These are the basic fundamentals for decision making. It's basically how you think. If I'm not going to pick this up. I'm going to do this. So I hope this tutorial explained it and the, explained it easily and comfortably. If it didn't, please again ask on the forums. I'll answer any questions you might have. If this video has any errors, please tell me. I will fix it immediately. Anyways, that's it for conditional statements. I'm YCV, and I'm out.